Hello and welcome back to the Immortal News family. In today's heartfelt video, we bring to you the latest updates on the passing of some truly remarkable individuals within the last 24 hours. As a part of the Immortal News family, we are committed to honoring and remembering those who have made a lasting impact in our lives and the world. If this video touches your heart, or if the stories of these extraordinary people have moved you, please show your respect and remembrance by giving this video a thumbs up. Thank you for joining us in this moment of reflection and tribute. Number 11. Frank Griffin, a distinguished Hollywood makeup artist renowned for his long-standing collaboration with Steve Martin, left an everlasting mark on the film industry through his artistry and creativity. Known for his meticulous work on 20 films with Martin, Griffin was the genius behind memorable looks in movies like Roxanne, where he created the iconic prosthetic nose for Martin's character. His other notable contributions spanned a diverse range of films, including Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Westworld, and Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Born Frank Henry Griffin Jr. on June 25, 1929, in Denver, Colorado, Griffin grew up in a family with deep roots in the entertainment industry. His mother, Margaret, was a vaudeville performer, while his father, Frank Sr., worked as a house painter and later at Columbia Pictures. The family moved to Los Angeles in 1942, and Frank attended the Hollywood Professional School, where he studied acting alongside his sister, actress Deborah Paget. Griffin began his Hollywood career as an actor under the stage name Rule Shane, appearing in films like The Giant Claw and TV shows such as Death Valley Days and U.S. Marshall. However, feeling unfulfilled, he transitioned to makeup artistry in the mid-1960s, finding his true passion. His talent flourished at CBS and Fox, where he worked on shows like The Green Hornet and Lou Grant. Beyond his film work, Griffin's life was filled with love and family. He was the father of five children, including Beau, a Hollywood grip, and the grandfather to six. For the last 43 years, he lived with his partner, Linda Trainoff, a former Hollywood hairstylist. Frank Griffin passed away at the age of 95, surrounded by family in his Studio City home. Tributes to Frank Griffin. Number 10. Will Jennings, an Oscar-winning lyricist renowned for crafting some of the most iconic songs of the late 20th century, left a lasting impact on the world of music. He was best known for his work on My Heart Will Go On from Titanic and Up Where We Belong from An Officer and a Gentleman. These masterpieces won him two Academy Awards, alongside multiple Grammys and Golden Globe Awards, cementing his place in the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2006. Born Wilbur Herschel Jennings on June 27, 1944, in Kilgore, Texas, Jennings began his professional journey as an educator at Tyler Junior College and later at the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire. However, his passion for music led him to Hollywood in 1976, where his career as a lyricist took off. Over the years, Jennings collaborated with legendary artists such as Steve Winwood, Eric Clapton, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, and Roy Orbison. His partnership with Clapton yielded the Grammy-winning Tears in Heaven, a song that resonated deeply with audiences worldwide. Jennings co-wrote other memorable hits, including Looks Like We Made It for Barry Manilow and Higher Love for Steve Winwood. His creative talents were also showcased in film music, writing songs like Where Are You Christmas for How the Grinch Stole Christmas and contributing to the soundtrack of A Beautiful Mind. A gentle soul with a brilliant mind, Jennings was remembered for his warmth and generosity. He was married to his wife, Carol, and is survived by his sisters, Joyce and Gloria. He passed away at his home in Tyler, Texas at the age of 80 after several years of declining health. Tributes to Will Jennings. Number 9. DeAndre Overton, a talented football player who left an everlasting mark on Clemson's storied program, is remembered for his contributions to the team's success and his infectious spirit on and off the field. As a wide receiver for Clemson from 2016 to 2019, 
Overton caught 52 passes for 777 yards and scored seven touchdowns, playing a key role in the team's victories in two national championships in 2016 and 2018. Known for his athletic prowess and leadership, Overton was named co-captain during his senior season, an honor that cemented his place in Clemson's history. Born in North Carolina, DeAndre Overton's passion for football was evident from a young age. His dedication to the sport and his team was matched by his deep commitment to his family and community. Overton was admired by his peers and coaches not only for his on-field talent, but also for his kindness, humility, and the positive energy he brought to every endeavor. Beyond the gridiron, Overton's life was filled with moments of joy shared with family and friends. His compassionate nature and the bonds he formed with his teammates left a lasting impact on all who knew him. DeAndre Overton tragically passed away in Greensboro, North Carolina, at the age of 26. Though his life was cut short, his legacy as a champion and a beloved member of the Clemson community will endure. Tributes to DeAndre Overton. Number 8. Screamin' Scott Simon, an iconic figure in rock and roll, was renowned for his 52-year tenure as the energetic pianist of Shana Na, best known for co-writing the song Sandy, performed by John Travolta in Greece. Simon's contributions to music were profound. His lively performances with Shana Na, where he often played the piano with his feet, brought joy to countless fans worldwide, solidifying his place as a beloved entertainer. Born Scott Simon on December 9th, 1948, in Kansas City, Missouri, he was an active participant in sports and music from a young age, eventually moving to New York City to attend Columbia University in 1966. It was here that he earned his nickname, Screamin' Scott. After graduating in 1970, Simon joined Sha Na Na, a doo-wop group fresh off their Woodstock appearance. As the band's pianist and later managing partner, he played on every album except their first, and became a key contributor to their unique sound and stage presence. Simon's talents extended beyond performance. He was a songwriter and composer, contributing to both the band's albums and his solo work. His partnership with Louis St. Louis on the song Sandy for Greece was a standout achievement, with the soundtrack becoming one of the best-selling albums of all time. He was also a regular on The Sha Na Na Show, which ran for four seasons and featured musical legends such as Chuck Berry and James Brown. Simon passed away at the age of 75 in Ojai, California, after a long battle with sinus cancer. He is survived by his wife, Deborah, daughters Nina and Morgan, stepson Nick, and granddaughters Rocket and Naomi. His legacy endures through the timeless music and joy he brought to audiences around the world. Tributes to Screamin' Scott Simon. Number 7. Janelle Ann Kidman, the beloved mother of actress Nicole Kidman, was a figure of quiet strength and enduring love. Revered for her steadfast support and the wisdom she imparted, Janelle shaped the lives of those around her, leaving an everlasting impact on her family and community. She was a guiding force behind her daughter's successful career and a source of inspiration in Nicole's journey from a young aspiring actress to an internationally acclaimed star. Born in Australia, Janelle Kidman was a woman of determination and grace who dedicated herself to her family and their dreams. Her nurturing spirit, unwavering encouragement, and belief in the power of possibility were fundamental to Nicole's success. Janelle's passion for education, equality, and opportunity was reflected in her commitment to her daughters, ensuring they had every chance to pursue their own paths. She instilled in them the importance of hard work, independence, and courage to follow their dreams even when she did not have the same opportunities in her own life. Nicole announced her mother's passing with a heartfelt tribute during the Venice Film Festival. Janelle Kidman passed away surrounded by her loved ones, leaving behind a legacy of love, strength, and support that will continue to influence and inspire. 
Her death marks the end of a life lived with grace and dedication, but her spirit lives on in the achievements and memories of her family. Tributes to Janelle Ann Kidman. Number 6. Paul Goldsmith was a pioneering force in American motorsport, excelling in both motorcycle and automobile racing. Renowned for his versatility and fearless spirit, he claimed two USAC Stock Car National Championships in 1961 and 1962 and won the final NASCAR race on the historic Daytona Beach Road Course in 1958. Earlier, he made his mark in the world of motorcycles, famously capturing the 1953 Daytona 200 for Harley-Davidson. Born on October 2, 1925, in West Virginia, Goldsmith relocated to Detroit, Michigan during his early years. He served in the Merchant Marine during World War II, and after the war began a career that saw him move seamlessly between different forms of racing. His motorcycle racing career began accidentally in 1946, quickly progressing to success on the AMA circuit, where he was celebrated for his dedication and skill. Goldsmith's transition to stock cars was marked by his collaborations with legendary figures like Smokey Eunuch and Ray Nichols. His remarkable drive at the 1958 Daytona Beach Road Course remains a standout achievement, making him the only racer to win there in both stock cars and motorcycles. Throughout the 1960s, he dominated USAC stock car racing, capturing numerous victories and solidifying his reputation as a tenacious competitor. Off the track, Goldsmith was a passionate aviator often piloting himself to races. After retiring from professional racing, he became a successful businessman, operating ranches, restaurants, and the Griffith Merrillville Airport in Indiana. His love for speed and adventure never waned. He remained active in aviation well into his later years. Paul Goldsmith passed away at 98 in Munster, Indiana. As the oldest living veteran of the Indianapolis 500 at the time of his passing, his legacy as a multidiscipline racer continues to inspire new generations of motorsport enthusiasts. Tributes to Paul Goldsmith. Number 5. A towering figure in the world of football, Ron Yates was a formidable defender and a transformative leader who played a pivotal role in shaping Liverpool's golden era of the 1960s. Known for his commanding presence and leadership on the field, Yates captained Liverpool to six major trophies, including two first division titles and the club's first ever FA Cup triumph. His steadfast defensive skills and indomitable spirit earned him the nickname, the Colossus. Ronald Ron Yates was born on November 15, 1937 in Aberdeen, Scotland. He began his career at Dundee United, where his exceptional performances as a defender caught the attention of Liverpool's iconic manager Bill Shankly. Signing with Liverpool in 1961, Yates was immediately appointed captain and quickly became a key figure in the club's rise to prominence. Under his leadership, Liverpool gained promotion to the first division and went on to win the league in 1963-64 and again in 1965-66, as well as capturing the 1964-65 FA Cup, the club's first in its history. Yates also had notable spells as a player manager with Tranmere Rovers and Barrow, and he played a crucial role in the early development of American soccer, coaching the Los Angeles Skyhawks and the Santa Barbara Condors. His playing career also saw stints at Staleybridge Celtic, Formby, and Rill where he continued to inspire with his knowledge and passion for the game. Beyond the pitch, Yates was known for his humility and dedication. He returned to Liverpool in 1986 as the club's chief scout, a position he held until 2006. In 2009, he was honored as an honorary scouser by the city of Liverpool, a testament to his enduring legacy. Ron Yates passed away at the age of 86. His contributions to football, both on and off the field, continue to be celebrated and he remains an inspiration to many for his resilience, leadership, and love for the beautiful game. Tributes to Ron Yates.
Number 4. Charles F. McMillan was a distinguished nuclear physicist who made profound contributions to national security and nuclear science in the United States. Renowned for his leadership as the 10th director of the Los Alamos National Laboratory, McMillan played a vital role in safeguarding the country's nuclear deterrent. His tenure, beginning on June 1, 2011, was marked by a commitment to scientific excellence and innovation, which helped solidify the laboratory's role in maintaining the safety, reliability, and performance of the U.S. nuclear stockpile. Born in 1954 or 1955, Charles F. McMillan held a doctorate in physics from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics and Physics from Washington Adventist University. His career began at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California, where he spent over two decades contributing to experimental physics before joining Los Alamos in 2006. His expertise and leadership were further recognized when he was elected to lead the Nuclear Security Enterprise Integration Council, a testament to his ability to bridge science and national security imperatives. As director, McMillan also served as president of Los Alamos National Security, LLC, overseeing the lab's management and operations for the National Nuclear Security Administration. During his leadership, he received two Department of Energy Awards of Excellence, honoring his outstanding contributions to the field. Outside of his professional achievements, McMillan was a passionate musician, playing piano, organ, and recorder in a Baroque chamber music ensemble, and an avid photographer, capturing the world with an artist's eye. He was married and had three children, embodying a balance of professional dedication and personal passions. Charles F. McMillan passed away at the age of 69 in Los Alamos, New Mexico. His passing marked the end of a life defined by service to his nation and a deep commitment to scientific advancement. His legacy endures in the continued mission of Los Alamos National Laboratory and in the broader community of nuclear science and security. Tributes to Charles F. McMillan. Number 3. Kelly Alexander was a steadfast advocate for civil rights and an influential politician who served as a Democratic member of the North Carolina House of Representatives. Representing the 107th District, he dedicated his life to public service and championed numerous causes for social justice, equality, and community development. Known for his commitment to his constituents, Alexander was a guiding force in the North Carolina Legislature, where he served with distinction from 2009 until his passing. Born on October 17, 1948, Kelly Alexander hailed from a family deeply rooted in the civil rights movement. He was the son of Kelly Alexander Sr., former NAACP chair, and the nephew of Frederick Alexander, a notable civil rights activist. Raised in Charlotte, North Carolina, he attended West Charlotte High School and the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. After completing his education, he returned to Charlotte to manage the Alexander Funeral Home, a family business and also shared his knowledge through teaching at local institutions such as Central Piedmont Community College and Johnson C. Smith University. In his political career, Alexander continued his family's legacy by becoming president of the North Carolina NAACP and serving on the National NAACP Board. He was the first African American to be appointed to the Airport Advisory Committee in North Carolina and successfully opposed legislative amendments that would have extended term limits for state assembly members. His leadership and advocacy earned him a reputation as a powerful voice for marginalized communities. Alexander passed away at the age of 75. His enduring impact on civil rights and state politics remains an inspiration to many, and his efforts will continue to resonate within North Carolina and beyond. Tributes to Kelly Alexander. Number 2. Derek Boshier was a pioneering figure in British pop art, celebrated for his innovative use of mixed media to challenge societal norms and explore the intersection of high and low culture. Known for his collaborations with icons such as David Bowie and The Clash, Boshier's work spanned various forms, from painting and drawing to film and installations, always infused with a subversive wit and political consciousness. Born on June 19, 1937 in Portsmouth, England, 
Eric Boscher attended Yeovil School of Art and later the Royal College of Art, where he studied alongside contemporaries like David Hockney. His early works, including pieces like Special K and The Identity Kit Man, were heavily influenced by political events, advertising, and the expansion of American culture. After graduating in 1962, Boshier explored new forms of expression, shifting to photography, film, and video in the 1970s. By the end of the decade, he returned to painting, continually evolving his style and approach to match the changing cultural landscape. Throughout his career, Boshier was driven by a desire to reflect on contemporary issues, including technology, war, and societal change. His ability to adapt his medium to his message allowed him to remain relevant in the ever-evolving art world. His work was showcased in significant exhibitions worldwide, including MoMA in New York and the Tate Gallery in London. Notably, he designed album covers and stage sets for David Bowie, blending art and music in groundbreaking ways. Beyond his artistic achievements, Boshier was a beloved teacher, influencing a new generation of artists at institutions such as the University of Houston and the California Institute of the Arts. He was known for his kindness and his passion for sharing knowledge, maintaining deep friendships across the art world. Derek Boshier passed away at the age of 87. His impact on contemporary art endures, inspiring future generations to challenge conventions and view the world with a critical creative eye. Tributes to Derek Boshier. What's trending on the internet? News 1. The cause of death for Keiki Jabbar, beloved star of Owen's Love and Marriage Huntsville, has been confirmed as carbon monoxide poisoning. According to the Alabama Medical Examiner's autopsy report, Keiki had a carboxyhemoglobin level of 64% in her blood, a concentration far above the normal range of under 2% for non-smokers and under 5% for smokers. This high level of carboxyhemoglobin a compound formed when carbon monoxide binds with hemoglobin, proved to be fatal. While the toxicology report also detected the presence of oxycodone and oxymorphone in her system, the primary cause of death was determined to be poisoning from carbon monoxide exposure. Keke Jabbar passed away in July at the age of 42, with her family sharing that she died peacefully at home surrounded in love. Beyond her television fame, Keke was known for her work as a writer, editor, author, and professor touching many lives through her various roles. Fans and friends continue to remember Keiki for her vibrant spirit, passion, and dedication to her craft. Her family and loved ones are finding comfort in the support of her fans and the lasting impact of her life. News 2. Florida is mourning the loss of high school football star Chance Gaynor, who tragically collapsed during a game in Port St. Joe on Friday night. The 18-year-old wide receiver was rushed to the hospital after the sudden incident, but he was later pronounced dead. The game at Liberty High School was halted immediately, with next week's match already postponed in light of the heartbreaking news. Gulf County Superintendent Jim Norton described Gaynor as one of the best young men ever to walk the halls at Port St. Joe High School, highlighting both his exceptional athleticism and his remarkable character. Gaynor, known for his world-class speed and his warm personality, was also an honors student with a GPA above 4.0. He had recently visited Vanderbilt University to explore a potential future there. As the community processes this tragedy, grief counselors are being made available to support students, players, teachers, and staff at the school. Authorities are working to provide comfort and care during this difficult time. Chance Gaynor is remembered for his vibrant spirit, academic excellence, and the positive impact he had on those around him. The community will continue to celebrate his legacy and the light he brought to everyone he met. News 3. Candace Cameron Buer is mourning the loss of her father-in-law, Vladimir Buer, who passed away at the age of 73 on September 3rd. Candace, 48, shared a touching tribute on Instagram, expressing her deep admiration and love for Vladimir, father to her husband, former NHL star Valery Bure. Our hearts are broken as we grieve the loss of Val's dad, Vladimir Bure. I love this man so very much, Candace wrote. She described him as a symbol of strength, dedication, and love, calling him a little bit superhuman. Vladimir was not only a beloved family member but also a four-time Olympic medalist in swimming and a two-time Stanley Cup winning coach for the New Jersey Devils. 
Candace highlighted his notable achievements, including his Olympic victories at the 1968 Mexico City Games and the 1972 Munich Games, as well as his time as a fitness consultant with the Devils, where he helped the team secure the Stanley Cup in 2000 and 2003. The family's loss has drawn an outpouring of support, including messages from fans and colleagues. Candace and Valerie's daughter Natasha also honored her grandfather, writing, My incredible Dedushka, rest in peace. Number 1. Martin France, a highly acclaimed British jazz drummer, was renowned for his innovative drumming style and contributions to contemporary jazz music. With over 100 album recordings to his name, France's artistry resonated through diverse genres and collaborations. As a professor at the Royal Academy of Music in London, he shared his expertise with the next generation of musicians, shaping the future of jazz. Born on February 29, 1964, in Manchester, England, Martin France began his musical journey early, performing in working men's clubs and organ trios by the age of 12. In 1983, he moved to London, where his career flourished. France recorded extensively for ECM and played on sessions for both European and American films and television, showcasing his versatility as a studio musician. His unique approach to electronic and sequenced drums earned him recognition and opportunities to work with celebrated artists like Ivan Arset, Django Bates, Dave Holland, and Elvis Costello. France was a co-founder of the band Spin Marvel, releasing two acclaimed albums and performing at the Cheltenham Jazz Festival with notable musicians such as Niels Petter Mulver and John Paul Jones of Led Zeppelin. His collaboration spanned the globe, including performances with prestigious ensembles like the NDR Big Band, BBC Concert Orchestra, Royal Liverpool Philharmonic, and the London Symphony Orchestra. His talent crossed over into composing, where his music for KPM slash EMI was widely used in TV and commercials worldwide. Throughout his career, France worked with a broad range of legendary musicians, from jazz icons like Joe Lovano and Kenny Wheeler, to contemporary artists like Maria Schneider and Niels Petter Mulver. He was known not only for his technical proficiency, but also for his ability to infuse his performances with emotion and creativity. Martin France passed away at the age of 60, after a long illness. His legacy continues to influence the world of jazz, remembered for his dedication, innovation, and the passion he brought to every performance. Tributes to Martin France. A beloved actress known for her role as Dita in the popular TV series Sultana 